You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. All right, so the NFL draft is in the books, and now from a college football perspective, it falls on those teams to now replace what they lost. Over at ESPN, they had their staff, mainly the college football staff, I mean, you know, Mark Schleybaugh, Heather Denich, Adam Rittenberg, Andrea Adelson, like that crop of people go through each first round pick and give you the replacement for them at their previous school. So, for instance, Jaden Daniels, Garrett Nussmeyer. That's an easy one. We all know that. Garrett's going to be the starter. We all expect Garrett to have a, a really strong season. Everyone's excited about it. That's going to be a big key to LSU's offense, you know, you know, keeping up on the, on the track that it is. That's the easy one. Some of them may appear easy, but aren't as easy. And that is absolutely the case when you look at replacing Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. for LSU. Because LSU has so much depth there. It's just this vast wealth of talent that anyone would covet. And that's what LSU has. And they added to it even with guys like C.J. Daniels and Xavion Thomas out of the transfer portal. Speaking of those two, when you go down the list and you get to Malik Neighbors, the replacement that Mark Schleybaugh lists is C.J. Daniels or Xavion Thomas. Now, a lot of you might say, oh, what about Kyron Lacey? And fair, that's not where I'm going with this because we all know Kyron Lacey is going to have a, a breakout season. And in the write-up, Schleybaugh mentioned Kyron Lacey was LSU's number three. He figures to become Nussmeier's primary target. For what it's worth, when you scroll down and you get to pick 23 and you find Brian Thomas... That's where Kyron Lacey was listed as the replacement. Now, that, that one was done um, by Heather Dinich. Those guys, especially Kyron Lacey, will absolutely have a big role. And they will be massive in replacing the production lost. C.J. Daniels, veteran guy. I mean, you know, all-conference USA guy, over 1,000 yards receiving. We know what he is. Same thing with Xavion Thomas, and you look at the way he's going to impact in the return game, huge. But there's two guys that weren't mentioned here that just aren't getting the respect nationally yet that they will when the season starts. And again, you're looking at this from a national perspective, you go with the easy choices. Kyron Lacey was the, you know, the third guy last year. He's going to step up. C.J. Daniels, Xavion Thomas, the two big transfer portal additions. You're not going to bring them in if you're not going to play them. Sure. But I'll take you back to spring practice and Brian Kelly. And Brian Kelly was asked this question, you know, kind of about replacing production, but specifically how the tight ends could help replace production. And this is what he had to say about Mason Taylor, who's going into his third year at LSU. He's a player that we're going to count on much more than we did last year. I mean, he's going to be a central figure in what we do. And, and Garrett looks to him as well. And so I, I think that in this offense, the tight end will be featured quite regularly. It wasn't just Brian Kelly either. How about Joe Sloan, the guy who's going to be calling those plays? He talked about Mason Taylor and the role that he'll play in 2024. Mason Taylor is one of our best football players. Uh, LSU fans know him for the last two years and just his consistency and his ability to make plays. And I think we want to find ways to get him the ball. And I think you could see Nuss working his way or obviously we're going to go where the read takes us, but putting him in positions where he potentially is the first, second or, or third read where the ball maybe will find him a, a, a little bit more. But I think, you know, just from a consistency standpoint and uh, an experience standpoint, he obviously brings a ton. Um, and I think he's one of the best tight ends in the country. And we want to definitely want to utilize him that way. That's the head coach and the play caller telling you how big of a fixture Mason Taylor is about to be in this offense. And they both said very similar things. Garrett looks to him. You know, Garrett trusts him. You're familiar with him, but he's going to be 
featured. He's going to be a big part. We want the tight end position to be that. Joe Sloan said he's one of their best football players and one of the best tight ends in the country. Look, I don't know if for this you for this PCSPN did you specifically had to you know replace a receiver with a receiver, but Mason Taylor is going to be a massive part of replacing the receiving yards lost uh, in in Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas going to the draft. The head coach and the play caller told you that. If that's not enough, you've already seen it. Go back to the bowl game. Mason Taylor in the bowl game versus Wisconsin had seven receptions, career high, 88 yards, tied his career high. He had a career game the first time out with Joe Sloan calling plays and with Garrett Nussmeyer throwing him the football as the starting quarterback. That's what you're getting ready to see. That's going to be a massive part of replacing the production loss with Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas heading off to the NFL draft. You can take their word for it, or you can look at what you've already seen. Not to say that Xavion Thomas won't have a big role. Not to say that C.J. Daniels won't have a big role. Not to say that somebody like Aaron Anderson or Shelton Sampson or guys like that will have a big role. But those are the easy choices when you're looking at this from a national perspective. When you're a little bit here, a guy like Mason Taylor is somebody that you're absolutely going to see burst onto the scene more this year and become more nationally than just the guy who caught the two-point conversion against Alabama in 2022 as a freshman. You could see Mason Taylor become, instead of the guy who caught the two-point conversion against Alabama, the next great tight end to come out of uh, you know Brian Kelly's tutelage. Join guys like Kyle Rudolph, Cole Komet, Michael Mayer. You know the list. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he's going to have a 1,000-yard season or catch 15 touchdowns or anything like that. But he's going to grab the national attention at some point this year because of the increased role that he will have. The other guy that is going to get more publicity nationally this season is Chris Hilton. Listen to what Brian Kelly said about Chris Hilton in spring this season. When guys move on, it thrusts you into, you know, that position of need, leadership, whatever words you want to call. And he now knows that the mantle has been passed to him and it's his time. I think he's really done a, an outstanding job of, you know, being the next wide receiver up at LSU. Every day he's gone out there and, and practiced at a high level. He's developed a consistency at that position that I think at times maybe you could argue that he was, you know, lacked consistency, whether he was hurt or whether he would drop a ball. We haven't seen any of that. Chris Hilton has put himself in a position to be next, Brian Kelly just said. Again, the head coach is telling you that. And again, you've seen it. Go back to the bowl game. Chris Hilton was your fourth leading receiver that day. Like when you when you don't have Malik Neighbors, well, you had him a little bit in that game. Brian Thomas played the whole thing. But the guys you saw them really go to, and again, I understand disclaimer, you didn't have Xavion Thomas then, you didn't have C.J. Daniels. But after Brian Thomas, it was Kyron Lacey, Mason Taylor, Chris Hilton Jr. 56 yards and a touchdown. Had a massive catch late in that game down the sideline to put LSU in position to win. And on top of that, for the same reason you can expect a big breakout year for Kyron Lacey, whether it's whether it's him being, you know, the number three guy last year or whatnot, the relationship that he has with Garrett Nussmeyer, running twos with Garrett Nussmeyer for so much, Chris Hilton has that as well. There's already that continuity there. They've played a lot of football together in practice. You haven't seen a lot from Chris Hilton on the field, whether it be injuries or, and we all know his journey, injuries or, you know, being behind guys like Neighbors and Thomas and, and just everyone that he has had to fight through. But now it appears it's his time too. Those are the two guys. Like LSU, like we said at the start of this, has just an embarrassment of riches at the wide receiver spot. And that's why it's kind of hard to predict who's going to be the you know key replacements 
for Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas now that they're off. Kyron Lacey's a given. And yeah, the guys out of the portal will help. But the two guys you're not hearing enough about nationally that you will when the season starts are Mason Taylor and Chris Hilton because they're going to have really big roles in this LSU offense and they're going to have really big years for the LSU offense as well. And when you look back at it, you're going to go, yep, they were key. They were key in replacing the production. And then I really just want to see if a guy like Shelton Sampson can grab hold of it. They were really complimentary of him towards the end of end of spring practice with him, you know, really starting to take that next step, really starting to come along. There, there's just more development that has to go along there. But um, there will be no shortage of pass catchers for Garrett Nussmeyer to distribute the football to. And I'm fired up to watch Mason Taylor uh, go out there and, and have the, the 2024 that, that they're telling you they expect him to be able to have. So that's something uh that's something that should be awesome uh to watch going forward here as uh, LSU heads into summer and then camp and then the season. It's almost here, y'all. Never season never really ends. That's for sure. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.